I'm just going to wrap up, do some Q&A, and um, they've been hitting me with some good questions over the last few days, so we're going to, uh, I've saved the answers for those, because um, I think their questions are probably really similar to other people's questions, so let's answer it um, in a group. Rob, we have people that we want to introduce strongman uh, training to them, and they say, well, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to work on my clean jerk or I want to work on my snatch. And they, they believe that these are two divergent ways of training. You either do one or, or you do the other. And I, I'd like you just to kind of go on record explaining your philosophy about using strongman as a general fitness to just to improve uh, your overall fitness and how it translates into Olympic lifting. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that we see in strongman is the how important it is for the athlete to use uh, hip extension and to open those hips violently and the, the beauty of, of the movements that we employ is that they don't have to be taught they just need to be remembered because your body has been hardwired to do this to to pick things up push pull drag press you've already got all that dna that tells you that your body is supposed to do that so we put a, a tire in your hands or a stone in your hands and we teach you how to forcefully open up your hip and that has instantaneous carryover into a power clean. Instantaneous carryover into a snatch or any, act, any activity at all where you're opening up the hip violently. Um, we saw it a couple days ago when we did the stones. Every one of you opened up that hip violently. And if you look at a kipping pull up, a muscle up, tire flip, power clean, snatch, keep going through the list, kettlebell swing, every one of those requires you to open up your hip with violence. So um, it's a great lead in for all of those highly technical movements. Without being, the stones are really easy. Every one of you guys picked it up in less than five minutes. So I can teach somebody how to do, how to open their hip and use it in less than five minutes. Is another part of this the ability uh, to use strongman to gain strength and power versus a skill set, a specific skill set for like uh, using the rings or, or, or doing some of the uh, combined Olympic lifts? Well, yeah, the, what we employ is just work. You know, it's grunt work. It's move this from here to there. Um, the learning curve is flat. There is no learning curve. You know, that a muscle up is a highly technical skill that takes time to practice. And um, picking up the yoke and carrying it from point A to point B takes no skill. But if, if you understand the skill set and you don't have the power to do the muscle up, yeah, not gonna get I, I can read a book and I can understand it perfectly, but I've got to be able to, to actually generate enough power to do a muscle up. Um, strongman, the the beauty of these movements is that they don't take much practice or skill, but you get a whole lot of work. So it's, it's a high return on investment for a general population that like, if I want, if I want the quickest bang for my buck and I'm a, a member at a gym, strongman's the way to go, right? right. That's the way to go because I, I'm going to walk in the door and I can get intensity in just a couple minutes. I think that in less than four days or in less than four hours, I think we all learned that during this week. You know, I always, I always lead in we with that. We, yeah, <laughs> we, felt, we that. felt that, and we're going to feel it for the next couple of days. Yep. I mean, I, I always reference the squat snatch. Like, if you're a coach, how long does it take you to teach somebody, a new member, to snatch? Okay? Yeah. How long does it take me to teach somebody how to do a stone? And, and the, the return on investment is, and, and the learning curve it just makes it, as a coach, you have to explore that modality. You have to explore it. And as somebody who's really interested in the, the fitness of the members, I don't know how you ignore this stuff. We start with this and then we morph it into, you know, barbell movements. I want to talk programming a little bit. Not specifically, but in the monthly program, where would you like to see, um, I'm, I'm not talking as tools, but strongman workouts. I'm not talking about doing uh, uh, double unders, pull-ups, and yeah, a couple so of Yeah, so specific strongman strong workouts. Man workouts. Strong, um, three minutes workout. Um, <coughs> anytime, any, that's a tricky question.
tricky question. For somebody who says, hey, I'm going to go compete in a strongman contest in eight weeks. I need to get ready for it. I would have them continue to do our class workouts, but occasionally I would pull them out. Probably twice a week, I would pull them out and work on specifics. Um, so log, clean, or press for max weight. What, whatever it is, I would have them do. One movement, max. Uh, yeah, for one, one or two, and just um, establish some single rep maxes, some three rep maxes, where you're moving heavy load, really short duration, so it mimics a strongman event. I mean, it, the, other, the, the other option, too, is what we do, like I, we told you earlier this week, Wednesdays and Fridays, we give it as an option. So if you come in and you want a pure strongman workout, you're like, I don't like what's on the board. I want to do strongman. We'll give it to you. Um, and that workout is going to be, usually it's on the shorter side, yeah. you know, five minutes or less, and usually it's, the weight is cranked up. It doesn't have to be. And for, the, for the majority of people, let's say just people that want to get fit, uh, the majority of people, they probably, they're not going to come in asking you for strongman. They're not going to come in saying, I, I want to do more stones today. But if they do, if you're doing kettlebells, sub in a stone. You know, find a, a strongman substitute that mimics some of the movement. How about the short stronger exercises? <clears throat> if I want to add something in the same day, I can? Yeah. Or it's yeah. better to just yeah, do I the mean, short? I think, I think on some days, it's great to take a five-minute rest and yeah. then throw yourself a second workout. Oh. Other times, take a six-hour rest and throw yourself another workout. How do that, you know? Constant variety, executed at high intensity. How do I know if you give it like a ten minutes rest or six hours rest? Whatever you did yesterday, do it differently today. Okay. Right? So... Um, when my coach was programming for me leading up to this year's games, Saturdays were the days where the volume was really high. Usually it was four workouts. Sometimes he would say, rest eight minutes and start workout two. Other times it was rest three hours and start workout two. So he had me never knowing what was going to happen. <clears throat> like in four workouts, were they short or some of them long? Sometimes it was 20 minutes. And so the next one will be 30 minutes, the next one will be two, and then, I mean, constant variety. And the, the duration of rest between those workouts was always different, too. There are so many variables that it's impossible for me to give you a formula. I just yeah, I can't. Know, I, know, I, know. I can't. It's mixed. Right. It's, some days it's four minutes, other days it's eight minutes. But then everything works, <laughs> eventually. Eventually. If you look long, like we were talking about the other day, it all comes back. Then it's like, like Mo asked, it, you can't like point one thing no, that can help you. It's, it's just... Uh, it's an accumulation over a lifetime. Yeah. We had a, a long discussion at the board about how, easily it is, how easy it is to get lost in the details and the minutia of your, your programming and your workouts and you lose sight of the bigger picture, which is really that we're doing this to get healthier, fitter, faster 10 years from now, not next week. So when you liberate yourself from the idea that your programming today has a direct impact on um, you know, whatever's going to happen in the next two or three weeks or six weeks, when you remove that pressure, programming is really easy. So we had this long discussion at the board about how, how much more fun it is if you just look long term.